Raise your hand if you, like me, have an ADHD kid. <laughs> I'm not ADHD, although I am Dory from Finding Nemo in human flesh. That means I forget things very quickly. But what's the problem with ADHD kids today? And if you're a homeschooler, this is this is for you if you have kids that are kind of bouncing off the walls. Are you ready? The problem with ADHD kids is that school settings do not work. Now I'm going to tell you right now that the images that I'm featuring as I'm going through on the slides are from my ADHD kid. Um, this is our youngest son, Stephen. He was born last so that there were six of us at the ready to make sure that this child stayed alive to see his now almost 18th birthday. Whew. I remember when he was two weeks old, a friend of mine said, sometimes you can tell right away what a child's character or disposition is going to be. She said, what do, you, what do you see in this fifth child of yours? And I remember saying, can an infant be determined? Because this child, this child is determination in flesh. So when you're talking about a school setting and you have a child that has a lot of energy and they take in all of the sounds, all of the movement, all of the smells, all of the things around you, and you sit them at a table, not only are they not going to get a lot done, but they will make it their life's mission to annoy and pester every living, breathing thing within their little sphere of influence. And they'll, they'll be frustrated. So school settings do not work if your kids have ADHD. In small, tiny bursts, they do. This same child, if he gets an idea and sits down to chase his idea, you can't break his concentration. He is just tunnel visioned and he just needs to get it done. But remember that when you have an ADHD kid that you need to be creative with how you work with them. The very first thing that you need to know is that they need to move. And so one of the things that I did with this guy and my camera's backwards is when he was little, uh, we wanted to do read aloud time. So I, I had to give him things to do. He could climb the wall. This is the position that he would stand in for a monkey hug. So what he would do is he would climb up the wall and he would say, monkey hug. And then whoever was nearby would walk straight through him, grab him and continue to walk through and squeeze. He just was always very agile. To get his reading time in when he was little, I actually crocheted him a beard. His, this is not his actual one. I couldn't find his. His actually has a mustache, but he would wear this and he would get on his bicycle and he would ride around his bicycle until I said, stop. And then he would pause right there at a red light and I would read him a sentence or a chapter or a page. And then as soon as I could see his little brain starting to lose attention, go. And then he would do another lap. So remember that if you're dealing with kids that have this high need for movement, that you have to build that in. Take a page from the Finnish people, and that is do no more than 45 minutes of any work and then give them a 15 minute break. You will think that it's counterproductive, that that you didn't work long enough, you didn't get enough done, but your brain really only has the ability to truly focus for 20 to 40 minutes, 45 minutes on the outside. And then it starts to get frustrated. It starts to, it, it starts to panic a little bit. And if you have ADHD, that means trouble. So they're going to start to break their pencils, need to go to the bathroom, need a glass of water, lay under the table, lay on the table, bound, pound the table, give them bursts of movement. The next thing is, is that kids with ADHD are problem solvers. You know, you put my son, and yes, he is that mischievous. You put my son into a situation, and this is true for many kids that have ADHD, they instantly see everything 
and they're trying to fix it. They're trying to find solutions. It could be that they're mischievous solutions. How can I make this? Isaac Sailor. Ooh. Hey, bud. Just a second. Um, it could be that they are getting into trouble, that they're trying to find abilities to entertain their brain or take a break, but they need problems to solve. So give them puzzles. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a jigsaw puzzle. It could be, um, okay, I just cleaned the toilet. And now what I would like you to do is to go and give them gloves and then take the lid off the toilet very carefully and say, I'm very curious how this contraption works. Do you think you could study it for a little while and then explain the mechanism to me? <laughs> That kept that son entertained one day when he was six for like two hours. He had a ball with a clean toilet, figuring out the mechanism, playing with food coloring, and then did a whole YouTube video to show people how it worked. So give your kids things to solve, problems to solve, engineering things, puzzles, um, changing batteries, all, all kinds of stuff. They need projects to build. Look at this guy. Can you not tell? Let me make it a little bigger so that you can see what I was dealing with. This was, he, he was two, almost three, and there were things in this bin that he needed. So he would push a chair up and he would climb the chair and hold the rungs with his toes. He could stand like that for half an hour, digging in that bin to find what it is that he needed at that moment. Kids with ADHD, kids with a high need for bursts of energy need stuff to build. They need um, Lego sets, erector sets, Play-Doh, clay, crochet, all kinds of stuff. They need to do things with their hands. As they get older, they can do things like weed and garden and push lawn mowers and weed eat with the, we call them weed whackers. What do you guys call them in your area? Weed eat or weed whack. They can build fences. They can walk dogs. They can build dog houses, bat houses, owl houses, etc. They need stuff to build because they're project oriented and they can put all their energy into something. So look for projects that interest them and you will find that they get completely into that. It could be as simple as digging a hole and having them get into it. Um, if you don't, they, they actually find trouble. Kids with ADHD just find trouble. Hey, does anybody want to know where Steven is? No, no, can't find Steven. He stayed on that shelf for like a half an hour while we looked for him. Now you can judge me that I lost my baby for a little bit, but he was being so quiet and he was thrilled to death that he was on the third shelf up from the floor, hiding on this shelf that should not have supported his weight. Kids with ADHD have, maybe it's a stereotype, maybe it, maybe it is, but there, if there's an element of danger, climbing a tree, a little bit higher than what mom thinks is possible or should be possible or should be allowed. They love that. Getting in a wagon and being sent down the hill by their brothers with a helmet on, of course, but just to see how fast that wagon will go. They need a little bit of danger and it's okay. I know it's 2023 and I'm not condoning putting your children in danger, but a little skinned knee or a little bit of dirt in the face is actually really good for um, just problem solving and development and become very good at when you see your ADHD kid trip and fall, just look away and find something to do with your attention while you wait because you don't want to overreact. <laughs> It'll happen a lot. It just it just happens a lot. So let make sure that they have time and space and make sure that there's just a little element of ta-da in there. So how do you teach ADHD? This is the same kid. He is now almost 18 and he is getting ready to leave for college soon. Um, what I found as a non-expert so just take all of this with a grain of salt is that the more I tried to get him to sit still, the worse it was. He was about four when we would, we had five kids and at four, 
uh, at four years old, we would do family read aloud time or all kids read aloud time in the same room. Well, he not only needs to be busy, but he also needs a victim, somebody to poke at and torment. And so his next brother up was always in his sights, always, always in his sights. They could not be within... I call them my salad dressing kids because, you know, salad dressing, when they mix together, they make this beautiful taste, this beautiful aroma. But if you leave them to their own, they separate like oil and water. They don't mix well. Those are my bottom two kids. They're my salad dressing kids. So Stephen was four when he was tormenting his older brothers during read aloud time. So I, you know, with boys, is this stereotype? I'm old enough to be okay with stereotypes. With boys, all you have to say is, on your mark, get set, go. And then they'll just bolt. Or, I bet you can't. And then they're like, of course I can. Or, I wonder if you can do this. Of course I can. He was four when I said, I want to teach you how to make a chain stitch out of yarn because it's read aloud time. So I needed to give him something quiet for his hands. So I thought crochet, I could teach him how to crochet, not knitting needles, because if you do research back in the world war effort, when all of the kids were enlisted to help make things like sweaters and socks and mittens and stuff for the soldiers, the boys would actually have knitting needle wars to see who could make the most noise with their knitting needles. So I knew I couldn't teach him how to knit. So I taught him to chain stitch. And then I said, I wonder if you can make the world's longest crochet chain. And he went, ah, yeah. So he began his journey crocheting when he was four. Now, during COVID, he taught himself to do stuff like this. I'm telling you, your ADHD kids need projects. They need space and they need time to focus and they need to move. Isn't this adorable? <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. It even has like a stiff tail so it can just sit on the shelf. So I taught him how to crochet at four by the time, chain stitch. By the time he was five, he had been chain stitching and his chain was always 7,500 feet long. Eventually, I taught him how to add rows and over the course of the years, he has practiced his craft. This is not um, something that he widely publicizes. So you're welcome for me just interjecting and sharing it with the, the universe. However, it is really good for him with his hands when he really can't sit still. He crochets while he listens to audiobooks at two and a half times the speed because that's how fast his brain functions. So with kids with ADHD, you need to get creative. You need to think out of the box and you need to find things that fill in the gaps that they need. Um, they fill in the gaps. If they need to move their hands, you give them something to do with their hands. If they need to move their um, their tush, I'm sitting on a bouncy ball. Um, some kids need to sit on bouncy balls. Some need to sit on those balance stools that are a stool just on um, a leg type thing. Some kids need fidgets. Um, I had to be creative in in coming up with things that didn't make noise because he loved to use noise as a weapon against his next oldest brother. But he, in his projection, as we leaned into teaching him, what came out of this child were was artistic type things. So he's a sculptor, he's a painter, he's a crocheter. And we were just talking um, just yesterday and he was saying, I think I'm gonna be the first um, business owning lawyer who rows a boat and, and he just listed all of these things together. As we were driving today, he said, you know, I've been thinking if we could come up with a way, and then he went on to explain his ideas for helping solve the, the challenge of people driving and looking at their cell phones. And so remember, kids with ADHD need problems to solve. They need sounding boards, they need movement, they need mentors, and they need 
to be seen, they need the opportunity to show you what they're doing when it's said and done. So when he crochets or he creates a project, he doesn't let anybody near it because for him, the ta-da moment is the sweet victory. So with kids with ADHD, make sure that you keep them moving. If you have boys specifically, I'm going to encourage you to get them to sweat a lot. Kids, especially boys, especially preteen and teenage boys need that burst of energy. There's this, this flood of hormones that are going through their body and there needs to be an outlet for that. So sports, are really great. Yard work, really great. Hey, I wonder if you can dig a perfectly square hole that's six feet deep. Really great project. Let's build a shaduf, just like the ancient Egyptians. Really great project. There, let's, we, let's go do an archaeological dig or go on a hike to the top of the mountain and put our names in the, uh, the hiker's log. Really great activities. And I'm sure this works for girls too, but I'm only scientifically um, up to speed on boys because I gave birth to five sons. But you want to keep them sweating. You want to keep them moving. You want to keep them solving problems, solving, just double checking my spelling, and um, want to keep them moving, sweating, and solving problems. It's really important. Um, they're not all going to be like my Stephen, who is a modern day Renaissance man, who he's extremely artistic. He is extremely um, driven to do things like rowing. But I've found that, and I've read recently, that what you have when you have an ADHD kid is number one, somebody that drives you batty. But number two, they're leaders. If you take that ADHD kid that's sitting in a space that's driving everybody crazy and you put them outside in a group setting, they are the leaders 100% of the time. They, they're the ones that solve the problems and lead the way. And, and they're suddenly like the, the light of the party, the, the bright spot, because they're meant to shine in action, not necessarily on paper with pencil and pen. So be careful not to squish their joy. Make sure that you give them opportunity to make projects and lean into things. Um, it, wood, nails, PVC piping, rope, string, paracord, shovels, pickaxes. Uh, we're archers in this family. So archery, uh, they throw knives and tomahawks, they ride bikes, they, they row physical exertion, super important. With my son specifically, he'll have a burst of energy and then a need for quiet, a burst of energy and then a need for a nap. Um, he, this morning, just rode and in, in his boat. And so now, right now, he ate well and he's sleeping. And when he wakes up, he'll do some next project because for him specifically, it's a burst of energy and then a moment of rest, a burst of energy and then a moment of rest. And somewhere in his day, at some point, there typically needs to be a moment where he's like, look what I did or listen to what I did. Like he needs that ability. And so pay attention to your kids that that have this, I'm going to call it a superpower of ADHD. It's not a disability. Hear me clearly. ADHD, looking for the button. ADHD is not a disability. It is not. It is the way that the kids' brains are hardwired for action, for problem solving, for leading, and for doing great and mighty things. And when you take something like a tiger, a, a Siberian tiger, and you put them in a two-by-two -two cage, you end up with problems and a very sad tiger. So if you have a kid that has ADHD, the challenge that most of us have with those kids is that if we are not ADHD, if we are not active and problem solving people, then we try to squish them. We try to put them in these little boxes and to behave in a way that we think is acceptable and they go crazy and on their way to crazy they drive us crazy too. So we have to get out of our comfort shells, not for a long time. 
18, 20 years, it's all it takes is to raise a kid that is like that. You got to, you got to just swallow it for like 18 to 20 years and you give them opportunities to become great, great at what it is that they're good at. And they're going to put in the effort. They're going to put in the dedication and the determination to follow things through. And that's where you can coach them in coming alongside and helping them pursue their talents and their passions and their abilities. And it, it turns out to be a great thing. I think that so many kids end up on medication because they're not given the same opportunities to run after their passions. They're, they're told that they need to sit for far too long. Children are not designed to sit still. They're just not. So they don't need a big stack of curriculum and worksheets and tests to accomplish. They need an ax and to fell a tree. They need a shovel and to dig a hole. They need a, a hook and yarn and they need to make something super cool. You know, when uh, we hit a point in crochet, I think Stephen was, I had had foot surgery so it was right around his ninth birthday. And I decided that I would uh, revamp my own knitting. And so I hadn't knit since I was in high school. So I watched YouTube and I started to make this little mini sweater. And it occurred something I heard long ago. Just I was like, oh, have you ever heard the word sampler? Like in the good old days, the little girls typically, typically would sit around and they would work on their sampler. They would work on their embroidery stitches or their knitting or their crochet. My mother's mother was a tailor. And so the sampler was them hand stitching. And then you rip it out. The whole point of the sampler was to do something and to rip it. Um, in crochet, it's called frogging because when you grab the yarn and Stephen has a class, um, I, during COVID when he, when he went straight into crochet, I was like, dude, you know, what would be really good for you and your busy brain is let me teach you how to record a class and you can put it up there and maybe even earn a couple pennies towards your future. What do you think? He's like, I'll try it. And he, he recorded a beautiful how to crochet class. But one of the things that he did, what he talked about, what he learned during that class is when you create a sampler for the sole purpose of pulling it apart, because the goal wasn't the project. The goal was mastering the stitch, mastering the design, mastering the thing. And so right there when he was nine or 10, I think he was nine, um, when he started to rip things out he went from being okay to being fantastic at things because he realized that it was the practice that made it perfect. It was the practice that caused um, excellence to rise to the future or to the surface. It's the same way that he approaches rowing today and exercise. It's the do it and fine tune and, and fix the little tiny tweaks so samplers were a really big um, discovery for us. And that's where he honed his crafts when he was working. So your ADHD kid, I mean, look at this. He's the youngest. He was getting ready to ride. He was getting ready to ride his wagon down the hill with a parachute attached to the back of the wagon because it was super windy. And he was the test pilot. His brothers are like, I wonder how fast the wagon will go. And if the parachute will slow it down, he's like, I will test it. So he wore his, his flotation vest and helmets and all his bike pads. And he, he went down that hill more than one time. Uh, he, your ADHD kids are leaders. They're the ones that are going to volunteer for the dangerous stuff. They're the ones that are probably going to break a bone or two. Um, they're the ones that are going to cause, I can't watch him do half the things that he tries to do because he does it too fast, too far, too high, too crazy. And it just drives me crazy. I'm in the process of teaching him how to drive right now. Yeah, you, you can pray for me because <laughs> you can just, I'm just leave it at that. Just pray for me. And um, okay. So your kids are ADHD and um, they're leaders in the making. If you have kids that have particular um, quirks or gifts or abilities, and you're like, I, I really have no idea 
how to take what it is that they're they're showing and how to turn that into something. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that my email is a better way to homeschool at gmail.com. And one of my absolute favorite things to do is to brainstorm, is to look at something and to come up with six different ways from Sunday with how you can approach teaching a topic, teaching a character quality, teaching a routine, or um, raising your kids up in a way that allows their great to bubble to the surface. So I'm going to encourage you to reach out if you have any questions or anything. But that was my random thought for the day. I was chatting with another mom today. I have this amazing brief pocket of time right now where during my son's rowing practice, which this particular one is far away and on a ferry. So I'm stuck on this little island. So I'm walking this loop doing four to six miles while I'm waiting for the practice. And I got to chat with a mom today and she was, one of her kids has ADHD. And I was thinking, oh, this, these are the types of things that she needs to hear. And you know that if she needs to hear it, I need to hear it. And if I need to hear it, you know somebody that does. I know almost, I know so many families that have kids that have ADHD and their kids are dying because they're strapped to a table for far too long, trying to push a pencil across a piece of paper when really they are missing that element of curiosity and challenge conquering and adventure and movement. So that's the key. Get your kids to move, take it outside. The final thought was Stephen is my youngest out of five. And a couple of years ago, right before COVID, um, he, his older brothers were either away from home at school or in class. And I had this gap of time with just him for four hours a day. And I realized I've never had just him at the house before. And so he was still in eighth or ninth grade and we pushed all the curriculum aside. And I said, we are going to start every single day with a two mile walk. We live close to the water where we live right now. So we would walk for four miles, it's four miles down to the water or two miles, whatever. It doesn't matter, Becky. The details don't matter on this story. So don't, don't taste the rabbit. We'd walk to the water. We'd hunt for treasures. And then we would walk back. And during that time on the walk, I would have pre-prepped my brain with things that we needed to talk about. So English type lessons, um, how to approach a piece of reading in a way that you actively involve with the reading, how you can apply a mathematic concept in real life. We would talk about science. We would talk about history. Um, it was on one of those walks that he downloaded his brain because he decided that he was now safe to share his heart with what it is he wanted to do when he grew up. He's since changed his mind, but it's a beautiful conversation and I'll actually link to it. I'll go dig up the link and add it to the descriptions here. Beautiful conversation that after he downloaded, I said, dude, can I turn my phone around? I won't record you, but I want to record your voice so that when we get home, you can type all of this out because you're brilliant. And so he let me record the actual conversation. Take your kids with ADHD out of the box because they can't, they cannot thrive in the box and then get really creative with things that you can do with them, get their, get them moving and then stand back because they're going to be the leaders, the movers, the shakers. So I have to go because right before this video, I received two mattresses. We're in the process of transforming two of our rooms into married rooms because two of our kids are now married. And so in this house right now, I have bed frames to be assembled. I have mattresses to be inflated and put together and beds to be made. And guess who's going to do it? Not me, Steven, because he is my wizard. He is the one that if we need something done, I know to stand back and say, hey, do you think you can? And then he's off to the races. So let me know what you think. And I will see you next time.